Ooh, there goes the Supra. What's up, everybody? Today on this slightly cloudy May gray day when I'm feeling slightly under the weather, we are test driving a 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid. This is an Accord Sport L Hybrid with the leather seats. And this is the first year of the 11th generation Honda Accord, which is generally agreed by most members of the automotive press uh, the Accord, I mean, to be the best mid-sized sedan one can purchase. That seems to have been the general consensus since Ronald Reagan was president. And I think that pretty much holds true for this 11th gen model. There is a little bit of obvious cost cutting, but where it counts, this car still got it. Uh, first of all, from a test drive perspective, the powertrain. This is one of the most refined hybrid powertrains, if not the most, that I've ever experienced. It's not a plug-in hybrid, it's just a standard one where you put gasoline in it and um, the battery in the electric motor kind of charges itself either from the engine or from regenerative braking or from taking your foot off of the gas and slowing down. But you really cannot tell when the gasoline engine is or is not in operation when you're just driving it down the road unless you're paying more attention than you probably should to the um, hybrid graphic display telling you what the system is doing it's just so smooth and you unless you floor it and really rev uh, the engine up you never really hear it either Let's see, we'll do a little, uh, that's 65 miles an hour. So that's a little refinement check for you. I'm getting a little bit of wind noise, but really not much. Not much road noise to speak of. The steering is just basically telepathic. Um, it is a very nice car to drive from a handling perspective and a comfort perspective. It's the kind of chassis refinement that is difficult to find and very, very enjoyable. And that is why, you know, if you read Motor Trend or Car and Driver or Road and Track or whatever, they always rate the Accords very, very highly. Um, and I don't think they're wrong. The field, uh, in a way, has become more competitive and less competitive over the last few years because cars like the Toyota Camry are better than they've ever been, but there are fewer overall choices for the mid-sized sedan buyer in the U.S. market. Um, Ford has abandoned sedans completely. General Motors only makes the Malibu, and I mean, I'm pretty sure they only really make that for rental fleets. Um, I think Hyundai is about to stop building the Sonata, and Kia is going to kill the K5 within the next year or two. So it's more competitive, and that the cars that are left are better than they've ever been, but it's less competitive because there's fewer choices. Um, which makes me sad. I mean, I know SUVs are super popular and they're almost as efficient as a sedan and they almost drive as well as a sedan. But the fact of the matter is, almost isn't exactly. And um, I don't know. V-Dub doesn't make the Passat anymore. Ugh. The Germans and the Japanese... Well, I guess Volkswagen's German. The expensive Germans and the Japanese. Because Toyota shows no sign of slowing down with the Camry. Honda shows no sign of slowing down with the Accord. The Nissan Altima is still in production. And then, of course, you got your 5 Series, your A6s, your E Classes. But for the money, it's tough to beat an Accord. Even if this car has a flippy doodle 
non-automatic rear view mirror at its $35,000 price point and no blind spot monitoring because I guess the chip shortage is still a thing. The fuel economy is excellent on this car. The acceleration is good around town. It's absolutely adequate. On the highway at high speed acceleration, it does leave a little bit to be desired, but it's more than worthwhile trade-off for the fuel economy that you get out of it. And the chassis refinement is great. Let's put it into sport mode. Ooh, now I can hear the motor. So the sport mode kind of tightens up the throttle response. I do feel a little bit of difference in the steering. Yeah, there you go. You can hear it kick the engine on and rev the engine more so when you're in sport. Does it actually make the car any faster? No, well, that's subject to debate. <laughs> that engine. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna take it out of sport mode. I don't need to hear the four cylinder. No automatic windshield wipers. I had to bump that on my own. We are starting to see the effects of inflation on new cars. There's certain things that you would normally expect at this price point that you just don't get anymore. No navigation, which I don't know that that's that big of a deal for people. Most people use the um, Apple CarPlay Android Auto and it is wireless in this model and you do have this nice big touch screen. So I think that that's probably an acceptable omission, although I like factory nav still. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Gonna let the Fiat go. Give it the beans. Oh, feel the juice. So the acceleration's fine. I mean, it's a hybrid. What do you want? It's not a super fast car. Um, and like I said, I do think that it's worthwhile for the fuel economy that you get, kind of that trade-off and less acceleration. The only other motor that's available is the 1.5 liter turbo. Uh, it's a slightly detuned version of uh, the engine that I have in my 2023 Acura Integra. Runs on regular fuel in the Accord, so it has a little bit less power. Um, that's a great engine as well, but if I were gonna buy one of these, I think I would rather have the hybrid. I would uh, prefer the fuel economy to the little bit better performance of the 1.5. But hey, you know, for 40 plus miles a gallon all day, every day, there's a lot to be said for that. I think if you go to a Honda dealer, I don't, I don't know what they're actually selling these things for. I have a feeling they're trying to mark them up right now and maybe they're getting it, maybe they're not. But like I know they're getting the markups on the CRV hybrids, uh, at least where I am in Southern California. And, uh, Consider an Accord. I mean, if you can buy one of these for a window and they want five grand over for a CRV, doesn't it make more sense to get this car? I mean, why why are you going to pay the money for the CRV? You're not. It's not going to be worth five thousand more dollars in five years than an Accord will be. I don't know. I do wish when you put it in sport, it would change the sort of power meter to a tachometer so you could see what the engine was doing, but I guess it runs in electric mode so often that that doesn't really make sense. But that's really my only criticism of this center screen. Um, I think it's a very nice sort of gauge layout. The fuel gauge is not my favorite thing in the world, but I have the same one in my Integra and I've gotten used to it, so what the heck, I guess it's not the worst thing. I 
That poor car never gets driven. Between the cars I review for my YouTube channel and the fact that I have two other cars, I have like basically a brand new Acura Integra that just sits in the garage. I've put less than 2,000 miles on it in four months. But, you know, first world problems, first world problems. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about the new 2023 Accord Hybrid. Um, probably still retains its crown. I would say, yes, it does as the nicest driving mid-sized mainstream sedan. Um, so definitely put it on your shopping list if uh, you're looking for a car like this. And you know what? Hey, if you're looking for a small SUV and they're trying to rake you over the coals on one, please consider a sedan. You could save some money and probably have a car that'll do everything you need it to do. And we'll keep these four doors alive. So thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment. And have a great day. Bye-bye.